I'm a big proponent of things being settled on the field, right? Like Las Vegas sets a line for the conference championship games, but we don't immediately advance Oregon past Washington. We don't immediately advance uh, Georgia past Alabama just because there were favorites in those conference championship games. No, we allow it to be settled on the field. And so if you're an Oregon Duck fan and you are frustrated with the team's performance on Friday, I, I you know, have at it. Oregon looked flat in the biggest game of its season. The first quarter was a nothing burger for the Ducks. I was incredibly disappointed at Oregon's inability to run the football. I was disappointed at Oregon's inability to stop Washington running the football. That surprised me. That was not something that I expected. I thought Oregon was the better team playing better football, and they showed up in Las Vegas and laid an egg early in the game. That said, their season's not over. They move on to an important bowl game and an opportunity to do what few teams in Oregon football history have done, uh, you know, post 12 wins in a season. Dan Lanning and the Ducks have some unfinished business, and it's not lost on me that the loser of the Pac-12 championship game is 0-11 all-time in its subsequent bowl game. This does not bode well for the Ducks. Now, typically, you see these teams, they, uh, they struggle with leadership, defections of players who are going into the portal or declaring for the NFL draft, or just the overall disappointment of being that close to a conference championship, and now you have to readjust your expectations. And believe me, Oregon's got to readjust its expectations because Oregon drew in the Fiesta Bowl, not Oklahoma, not Missouri, not Penn State, not another highly ranked team. It drew number 23, Liberty. What was it? Give me Liberty or give me death? No, it's give me Liberty in the Fiesta Bowl for the Oregon Ducks. Now, I was bombarded immediately with questions from listeners and readers who wanted to know what in the hell or who in the hell is Liberty? Well, I'm glad you asked. Liberty has an enrollment of about 16,000 students. It was founded in the uh, early 1970s by Jerry Falwell. It's got a complex recent history. You can Google it. I'm not getting into that because I want to keep this about sports mostly. But Liberty's enrollment of 16,000 is supplemented by about 115,000 virtual students nationally. These are homeschooled kids who have gone on to college in some cases. And the homeschooled kids from Liberty will be playing in the Fiesta Bowl against the Oregon Ducks in a game that is easily, without question, the biggest challenge of Liberty's history in college football. This is a program that elevated to major college football just a couple of seasons ago, is playing in the Conference USA, and plays teams like Western Kentucky and New Mexico State. This is not the Pac-12. This is not Power 5 Conference football. And in fact, Liberty did not play a single Power 5 opponent this college football season. And according to all of the indexes in the strength of schedule, Liberty had the worst strength of schedule of any program in the country. They didn't play anybody, and now they're getting the Ducks. Now, I saw Oregon put 81 points on Portland State earlier in the season. I think there's a real chance that we see a bowl game record if Oregon shows up to play. Now, I know Duck fans are not excited about seeing Oregon play Liberty because they wanted to see Oregon play Georgia or Alabama or Florida State, or they wanted them to be mixed up in the college football playoff mess, and it would have been a mess. The way Oregon was playing on Friday, I'm here to tell you there was no guarantee that the Ducks were going to end up in the college football playoff even if they beat Washington. Look at what happened, particularly the way that Oregon played in the first quarter. I said it last week, Oregon needed to leave no doubt. Bo Nix needed to go out and win the Heisman Trophy on Friday. Oregon needed to make the college football playoff selection committee believe that they were the best team in America, and there's no way you could leave them out, and they didn't do that. So, you know, actions, consequences. I was taught that as a kid. University of Oregon's getting a bowl game. They're getting to go to Phoenix and Tempe and go play in the, in the Fiesta Bowl, and they're getting an opponent that they should clobber. I know that isn't the same as making the playoff and mixing it up with 
the likes of Alabama and Michigan and whoever else the committee decides on a whim is getting into the playoff these days. But if you're a Duck fan, I think you have to look at the trajectory of the program and Dan Lanning. This is not uh, on-the-job training. I don't want you to mistake it for that. But you need to look at the trajectory and ask yourself, is Oregon better situated than it was a year ago? And I think it is. I think it had a better season than it did a year ago. I think it's got a better bowl game, not a better bowl opponent, but a better bowl game than it did a year ago. The fact that the Ducks went from Holiday Bowl and Dan Lanning's first season and 10 wins to flirting with the college football playoff and playing in a conference championship game in year two is promising. He's got to get better. His team needed to be prepared better. The Ducks need to play better. Again, actions and consequences. It's not lost on any of us that Oregon just didn't play like it belonged in the playoff on Friday. That said, I like where Oregon is. I think they got the right coach. He's got to learn from this, and I can't wait to see what they do next. But before all that, they need to go give Liberty hell in this bowl game.